Star Wars Shadows of the Empires was one of my first Nintendo 64 games. I didn't get the console right at launch, rather I got it a few months later that Christmas. And with it, I got three games. Super Mario 64, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, and Mortal Kombat Trilogy. That was a terrible parenting decision. I played a crap ton of Shadows of the Empire, and everybody I've ever talked to who has played it has really fond memories of this game. And I absolutely see why. This was the first console Star Wars game that looked and felt like Star Wars. I remember booting this up, seeing the scrolling text, and hearing that music, and my dad was like, Which movie are you watching, son? And I got to proudly say, Dad, you dumbass! This is the game! Got grounded for that one. Worth it. The very first level is the Battle for Hoth. Let me tell you something. This level is so good, it's the reason that every Star Wars game after this had to have a Hoth level. And they could never compare. Look at this! This is Star Wars! It looks great, has music and sound effects right from the movie, and it plays awesome! You gotta understand that before this, the best version of the Battle for Hoth came from the Super Nintendo Empire Strikes Back game. And that game, you know, tried. I cannot stress enough how fantastic this level is. From shooting ATSTs to using the tow cable to take down ATATs. Start off a video game with this kind of quality and polish, and you know you've made a good choice. By the way, the main character in this game is Dash Rendar, friend of Han Solo and fellow smuggler. He brought some supplies to the rebels on Hoth, and he agrees to help out with the defense of the base because he'll get paid more money. Dash is cool. Even if you've never heard of him before, which I sure didn't before this game, you instantly know, yeah, this bro's cool. He's like if someone took the Han Solo meter and cranked that bitch up to 11. Of course, the shield generator gets destroyed, and Dash heads back to base to escape, and this is where we see the main gameplay, on foot with a blaster missions. These levels were, oh god, what is this? Were the controls always like this? I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it's similar to the Resident Evil style tank controls, where up moves you forward and you can turn left and right. But if you run and turn at the same time, it's so slippery! Every time Dash turns to the side, he goes into a sick Tokyo Drift. It's even worse if you try to turn and jump at the same time. While this is all off-putting, you can get used to it pretty quickly, even if it's definitely not the best. A lot of this is fixed by strafing, but I didn't remember how to do that until much later in the game. Is it just me, or is Echo Base looking a little... deserted? You'd figure there'd still be some rebels trying to escape, or at the very least some dead ones. Instead all that's left is snow troopers, probe droids, and SWEET JESUS I HEARD OF WAPAS! One of the camera options you can select is this cinematic mode. As if this was actually playable. Shooting dudes with a blaster feels good though. It has the right blend of Star Wars sounds, visual effects, and impact to make each shot landed on a snowtrooper to seem authentic. It's too bad you shoot like a stormtrooper! Let's talk about the absolute worst part of this game. The aiming. It's atrocious, unreliable, and will make boss fights extremely difficult. Dash fires his blaster in a massive spread, so much that you can see his entire body shift around while firing. This makes it hard to land a good shot on anything, as the more you fire your blaster, the weaker the shots are. You fix this by holding the Z button, which greatly increases your accuracy, and you can manually aim while holding it. Two issues with this. The first is that holding the Z button causes you to firmly plant your feet to the ground. There is no way to move while aiming. Because of this, shootouts end up being you standing still and taking blaster bolts to the chin while rapidly firing back, hoping you hit them. This is troublesome at tougher fights with more enemies, since you can't effectively run and gun between cover or fire smartly. Two, you can't actually tell where you're aiming. There is no indicator or anything on the HUD to let you know where you're shooting. You basically need to rapidly fire just to get an idea of what you're even shooting at. Holding Z also causes Dash to slowly lock on to enemies, slowly drawing his fire over to them. Emphasis on slowly. So basically, when it comes to shootouts, the only way to accurately hit anything is to hold Z, let the aim slowly drag over to them, and do this until everybody else is dead. And because of this, you're standing completely still, sucking down shots that they fire back the whole time. And if the auto-aim isn't cooperating, you're left trying your damnedest to awkwardly shoot back at them with zero indication of where you're even aiming in the first place. There it is. 
At least they were smart enough to make the first on foot level easy to figure that shit out. It's wide open, not a lot of tricky jumps, and not many enemies all at once. It doesn't make the controls any better, but it does give you time to realize what you'll be wrestling with for the next six hours. Dash gets the generators back online so that the ship bay doors can open, and he easily makes his way back until Metal Gear! This is an awesome first boss fight. Just a blaster at your side versus an ATST? That's badass! Complete with cover that it easily destroys? It's intense! Until you realize all you need to do is stay behind it and shoot it in its ass. No wonder Ewoks could beat them. Dash escapes Hoth and goes into space where you need to fight off a bunch of TIE fighters. And let's call this level what it is. A turret section. Sure, it's in space and against other spaceships, but this is a lame-ass turret section through and through. But you're on Dash Rendar's ship, the Outrider. And this ship is cool. How cool is it? So cool that they included it leaving Moss Eisley in the Star Wars A New Hope Special Edition. That means Dash Rendar is canon. Except they said all of the expanded universe no longer counts anymore, which includes this game and the novel it was based on. But Dash still appears in the movies, which means he is canon, but he's not, but he's in the movie, but which is it, George? <coughs> the game story jumps ahead until after Empire Strikes Back, and we meet the game's main villain, Prince Shizor of the Black Sun Gang. He's trying to swindle his way into power by becoming the Emperor's right-hand man, by making Darth Vader look like an idiot. Which, if you wanted that, all he has to do is show the Emperor the prequel movies. Yippee! Just how evil is Shizor? Well, he makes this face. Dash is trying to find the frozen and carbonite Han Solo, and learn that Boba Fett fought with IG-88, and tracks the robot to Ord Mantell. This stage is a train level, where Dash slowly makes his way to where IG-88 is. It's hard to remember for certain, but I can't help but feel that this level is pretty technically impressive for its time. You know, for the Nintendo 64 and all. At least during the times when the frame rate isn't 8. This leads into the next real boss fight against IG-88 itself. And let me tell you, this is where the game starts showing how sucky it really is. The obvious is that you can't see where IG-88 is. The graphics are so muddy and dark and IG-88's all black body gets easily lost in the horrible textures. This alone makes the fight extremely difficult simply because you never know where to shoot back at him. Now add to that the already mentioned awful aiming controls. The safest bet would be to shoot at him from a safe distance, but you can't aim worth a damn if you can even see him in the first place. I lost more lives here than I should have because of how awful everything is designed. Defeating IG-88 gives Dash a lead on Boba Fett's location, which is at an Imperial spaceport. The stage is alright, I guess. Nothing special. Just a lot of mountains and stormtroopers and- WHAT THE F***, ANOTHER WAMPA?! Yeah, just another plain old stage that doesn't really- HOLY CRAP A JETPACK! This was a defining feature of Shadows of the Empire. Being able to jetpack around in 3D space was kind of a big deal at the time. This kicks ass! At least at first. It's because of the jetpack that Dash Rendar's entire control scheme is so... floaty. It's so that when you're airborne with a jetpack, you feel floaty and flying. This still makes jetpacking around a bit on the awkward side because you never quite feel like you have full control. Still, I can't deny how badass this is. Speaking of badass, the boss fight for this stage is Boba Fett. And it sucks. This fight is pure bullshit. Remember how sucky the IG-88 boss fight was? Now it's all of those problems plus the jetpack. Boba Fett freely flies around to wherever he wants, and you're busy figuring out how to try not to look like an idiot. The floaty jetpack controls makes it difficult to get away from him or dodge any of his fire, and the slow, unreliable aiming makes it difficult to fire back. So I didn't even bother flying around. I just awkwardly strafed around on the ground and hip-firing and hoping maybe a blaster bolt or two would actually hit him. Well, you could just use secret missiles on him. Do you even remember shooting those? Because they don't seek shit. So I beat him by running around and using random blaster fire. It took me 20 minutes. And then you immediately fight him again in Slave 1. At least this part's easy, but a whole additional boss fight after a difficult, annoying boss fight? Unfair, game. Unfair. According to the next cutscene, even though I straight messed him up, Boba Fett still escapes somehow. Again, this game is based off the Shadows of the Empire novels that came up before this game, so a lot of the plot in the cutscenes is missing. Oh, maybe it'd be better if I played the PC version, which came out a year later. They worked for Jabba the Hutt and they had orders to kill you. But something's not right. 
You know what? Never mind. Luke is at Obi-Wan's hut on Tatooine, and a swoop bike gang hired by Jabba the Hutt is on their way to kill him. Dash catches the wind of this, and thus starts a level of Dash- Oh baby, I remember this swoop bike level being awesome! It still is on a technical level, and by that I mean the frame rate stays consistently high, even though you very clearly lap around the same parts of Moss Eisley a few times. But really, this level sucks. I've got to stop these swoop jockeys before they reach Luke. He can't handle all of them! Dude! He's a Jedi! You hold the A button to move forward, and you go so damn fast that it's near impossible to not hit walls, coming into a complete stop, or blowing up entirely. You're supposed to race against the other swoopers and knock them into walls, which somehow works, because every time you shoulder into one, it feels like you're just slapping them with a wet towel. It's actually way better to take this whole section really, really slowly, because it isn't that difficult to catch up to them. But that's lame! and you won't be going fast enough to hit those sweet ramps and get those challenge points and extra lives. But there are Sarlaccs, so we're supposed to forgive them. Dash saves Luke, and Luke says they're going to the ship Supraza that has the Death Star 2 plans. And he's like, Dash, bro, you wanna come? And Dash says, I... The Supraza level is completely forgettable. As in, I forgot this level existed until I played it again. It's a cramped up ship interior with nothing spectacular about it. Even the final boss sucks. It's just a loading droid that's easy as balls. Come on, you go from Boba Fett, who is a completely bullshit boss, but he is Boba Fett, to a dumbass robot. Many Bothans died to bring us this terrible level. This is actually true. You can look it up. So Leia got kidnapped again, finally living up to her title of princess. So Luke, Lando, Chewbacca, and Dash Rendar go to Prince Sejor's palace to rescue her and f*** me a sewer level! This is the absolute worst level, and it's so long! The entire stage is darker and muddier than the IG-88 fight, and there are times that you need to jetpack around in poo water! It's impossible to see things or what's firing at you. Everything is reactionary. I only know to fire after they've already shot me. And the final boss is a Dianoga. You know, that garbage thing. This means awkwardly trying to fly in poo water while not being able to see while using shitty aiming to try and land shots all at the same time. POO WATER! The level after this one is Shizor's Palace, and this level sucks too! There are dudes everywhere, so it's a lot of standing still and getting shot while trying to shoot back. And it's a lot of NOT BEING ABLE TO SEE! Look how dark everything is! I had to fire my blaster just to tell what's a wall and what isn't! In the final boss of this stage? Another lame-ass droid. A big one. That has three phases. I can't even describe how incredibly difficult he is. It took me at least 10 tries to defeat him. Which includes the 15 minutes of stage leading up into him. And I'm fairly certain that the only reason I was able to do it is because his AI bugged out on the second phase. At least this brings us to the last level of the whole game. After a brief turret section against Black Sun ships, you get full control of the Outrider against Shizor Skyhook. And you know what? It's fun again! This is another well done vehicle stage. You can freely fly the Outrider around, go up, down, around, and pew pew pew! You destroy the Skyhook by blasting turrets at the end of the arms, and then fly inside to shoot the core with a missile. Because it isn't Star Wars unless you destroy something from the inside. And with the final hit, the palace begins to explode, and you need to fly out to escape. But BOOM! Dash doesn't make it out, and his story ends with that explosion. Or does it? If you play on at least medium difficulty and successfully fly out, you're treated to an additional cutscene of Dash making a lightspeed jump at just the right moment, so that the galaxy thinks he's dead and won't come after him. And thus, the credits roll on an excessively frustrating game and- Oh my god! Is that a Freakazoid reference? I didn't remember the main game being as bad and as irritating as it actually is. What I do remember was how awesome the cheat codes are! Who doesn't remember putting in Wampa Stampa? Look at this, you can activate a cheat on every stage to play as different things. Board of the Hoth battle? Try it as an ATST. I walked around, shot down snow speeders, other ATSTs, and myself once. Board of Dash Rendar? Now play as a stormtrooper. What's bizarre is that you control him with the D-pad, and the control stick still controls Dash. This means you could feasibly create an incredibly awkward co-op game with this. Don't want to be the Outrider on the final battle? Boom! Now you're an X-Wing! Bored of that for some reason? Do the code again and BOOM! You're a TIE Fighter! It's a minor thing, but the inclusion of these cheat codes really did improve the replayability of this game. At least for when I was a blind young fool. 
Anyone who has ever played Shadows of the Empire that I've talked to always mentions how great this game is and how it's one of the best Nintendo 64 games. Everybody said this game was good. And the harsh truth is, it isn't. That's why my final rating for this game is an IG-88 out of 10. You know how everybody said that IG-88 is cool even though he's never done anything cool and everyone just said it so much that we came to accept it? That's Shadows of the Empire. We all thought it was great and kept telling ourselves that it was great and to each other. But that is definitely not the case. The movement, while awkward, can be adjusted to. But the aiming is absolutely unforgivable. It's atrocious and practically forces you to take damage against enemies. And Dash's own giant rhombus-shaped torso blocks your own view if you do try to aim. The jetpack, while a cool in theory mechanic, is unbelievably floaty and is especially difficult to utilize during boss fights without punishment. On top of all this, the level designs are awful. Low visibility, often pure darkness, way too hard boss fights, the swoop bike stage sucks, and unfair enemy placement makes the majority of the game just plain bad. It's bizarre to realize how quickly the quality drops off in this game, because that opening Hoff stage is really, really good. And the ending Skyhook battle is pretty good, but everything in between? No. No, it's not good. But at least those cheat codes are! Roar, I'm a wampa! Slap! Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. And if you want to watch another one of my videos, you can check out this one I did on an old DOS game known as High Sea Strader. Or if you're in the mood for more Star Wars, my friend The Completionist, who 100% a game every week, did one on Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, which I highly recommend.